Stan with 3D PT. So, getting ready for Thanksgiving and um, kind of thinking of what I want to do for the holidays in terms of gift giving and everything like that. Um, so, looking at some back at some options, um, I also realized I had to do some updates. So, actually, back in 2018, I first did this uh, wallet that's 3D printed on denim. And this was actually my main everyday carry wallet for probably about 40 years. And I've kept it as a backup, and the only real damage to it is some of the fabric has delaminated right about here from the uh, print. But I could probably just uh, glue this back on if I'm desperate. But even on the inside is where the most wear has occurred on this. And I just rubber banded over that. Now I did make a updated version, so this is like version 1.0. Two. Now it still prints as one solid fabric piece like this. Now before this red material is uh, on this one is Ninja Flex, which is um, low sh hardness TPU, and it's really flexible. This one I printed red armadillo, uh, which is extremely hard, and that makes a harder, more rigid material. It still has some flex, but this is definitely good for more for applications where you don't need a lot of where you just need a little flex and this ended up being a backup wallet um, I was going to do some other things here and I drilled out some holes but so this is 1.2 and that's out the window um, so those are my first wallets and then I did another video uh, where I did dual material so for this um, this is again Ninja Flex, and on the inside is um, MGen, which is a co PETG. Um, so, this is some leftover film that I had from the Make for COVID project. This wallet I actually um, I ended up using as my everyday carry for about the last year and a half. Now, unfortunately, what happened is um, I think I managed to knock into something. And managed to break um, the main plastic rigid piece off. Sorry, I'm dropping stuff all over the place. So I broke that off, and it delaminated completely from the flexible backing. And somewhere along the way, middle of the year, I managed to crack this part. Now this whole entire uh, flexible TPU skin has been really durable, and I can still take it to this day twist it and do all sorts of things to it but the rigid material is perfectly fine for some applications but not for being in a wall against mush and beaten around so I'm going to, I'm not going to print a, over fabric but I do want to do another dual material wallet this time I'm not going to use any rigid materials so here I have the three wallets lined up side by side. Uh, so here's one, two, and three. So this one's going to become my everyday carry from now on, and I'm going to um, put the hairband around it and hold all my cards and cash in. Um, this I'm going to keep as a backup. Unfortunately, this I'm going to have to recycle. Uh, so the two filaments I'm going to print this with are both um, TPUs under the Ninja Flex ninja tech brand uh, i'm not endorsed by them but if they ever want to please contact me um so the two i'm using i'm going to be using cheetah which has a shore hardness 95a and the other one is armadillo which is 75d now cheetah tech is kind of like a medium hardness from uh full ninja flex but even then, I could still take Cheetah Tech, and I could still tie a knot, and still do uh, cool things with this. So I'm going to print the base of my wallet in this. That way it's flexible and still bends around. Now, Armadillo is much harder and when you feel it it does feel like it's closer to something you're used to like PLA or PETG. I can still bend this 
and armadillo will hold its shape a little bit. Um, I can knot it up, uh, but it's very, very stiff. And doing this, um, I'm going to do the internal part that cracked before in this. So that way, there's still a little flex and bend. But even in armadillo, it's still more flexible than any rigid filament, and it doesn't snap. So printing temperature on these, um, I tend to run hot from about 240 to 250. Both these actually print at the same temperature. So because of that, I don't have to change anything in the settings for G-code or anything like that. Literally, I'm just going to load both up, uh, start with the Cheetah Tech, go to the armadillo. So for printing with this, it's in one piece, and you just do a uh, filament change um, once you go about, I want to say a millimeter up. For this version of the wallet, I also wanted to make just a couple little tweaks um, here on the corners of the wallet where the cards go. Uh, those corners are kind of sharp, and it'd be a little nice if they were a little more flexible. So if you go under the... Uh, shape generator menu, you can actually find a meta fillet. And let's see, radius, let's do a 10. And I just want to use this to knock off this edge here. And I'm not going to put it all the way through, but I will put it above. Let's see if I can show this. I'll put it above the level of the flexible part. Or I could use, well, I can't use the line tool on this because if I try and line it on an edge, it'll end up putting it somewhere weird. So I just have to eyeball this in place. But I'm just going to round these corners off here and here, make them a little nicer, and go with this for my uh, next version of my wallet. So I have the ta my TAS 5 printer uh, warming up behind me. Even though... Um, TAS 5s were not originally meant to do flexible filaments. Um, it's actually a very simple mod to um, make them flexible capable through their standard tool head. And for that, I just literally just stick a piece of filament underneath the um, hob gear. And that keeps the filament from oozing out through that point. So after two and a half hours of printing time, uh, produce this final wallet. So it's in two parts. Now both of them are sapphire blue. Um, be nice this time to have a more serious looking wallet. So this is 3D printed over packing tape. And actually um, you could use packing tape because it produces a smooth finish on the print. Um, and actually TPU sticks really well to this. I also found this works for um, PETG and actually a long time ago I did polypropylene. And it works for this. So, I'll try and do this one-handed here. Let's see. So the flexible base is cheetah, and the hard part is armadillo. So what's great here is, let me get a better view here. After printing, um, the reason I print on the packing tape was so it produces this smooth finish on the wallet. Um, you might notice some other things going on here. Let's see if I can zoom in. So right here I've got this weird zigzag line. Uh, this is actually from a gap between two lines of tape. And I just leave it in as an artifact, um, but if you don't want this to happen, um, then just uh, make sure to really be careful when you're taping, putting tape on your bed. Also have a uh, bubble here. So again, the pack packing tape kind of bubbles up and you could use your plate knife to flatten that out. Um, if you don't want those bubbles there, you could just uh, use your uh, knife to cut a hole or cut a slit and get that vented out. Um, for me, it's just part of the aesthetic of this. 
So once you have this uh, post process trimmed up, um, it's designed to be as easy to clean up as possible. Um, so you could take your standard cards, put them inside, as well as some cash, fold it over. So here I have the three wallets lined up side by side. Uh, so here's one, two, and three. So this one's going to become my everyday carry from now on, and I'm going to um, put the hairband around it and hold all my cards and cash in. Um, this I'm going to keep as a backup. Unfortunately, this I'm going to have to recycle. Um, so check the link in the description. If you like what you see, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting more 3D frame projects as well as STEM activities and lesson plans on teacher paid teachers.